Hey friends, I keep trying to fall, but I read 17 books in the month of January. So let's do a really quick January reading wrap up. This was honestly a really great reading month. I read a bunch of books I've been putting off for a while. I read some new releases. I had two five star reads. I'm excited to dive into these, so let's go. We're gonna do the four books I don't have physical copies of first. So not in the order that I read them in, but the first book we're gonna talk about was A Chris for True Love. This book finishes off the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy and I rated it a 4.25, which was like a slight disappointment because the last book had been a five star for me. I feel like my only like real and main issue with this book is why I couldn't get into it that much because I love the two main characters. And obviously for reasons that made 100% sense for the plot line, we didn't get like as much interaction between them, this story. Um, and that's like where I really missed. I missed like their conversation, their banter, I was like them in general. And so then I feel like because I didn't have a lot of them, I didn't enjoy the book as much. It was still a great book. It's still 4.25, but definitely like a little bit of a step down from the second book in my opinion. Then I listened to The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary on audio. Um, this is a fun one. It was like a cute romance. I gave it a three star. The only problem is I don't think I'm big thinking about this down the line, you know? Pretty much a flat share is like having a roommate, but who you never see. Like you guys work it out where like, Person one will be there from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And person two will be there from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And you guys don't cross paths. You never meet each other. None of that. Especially the two in this book, they leave like little notes for each other all in the house. And like they talk and they kind of form like a friendship relationship via these notes. And they meet up in real life. And it's just a lot of fun. I did read Ruthless Vows. And I think this one's a 4.5. Divine Rival is like an easy five star read for me. I love that book so much. And I absolutely just like fell in love with the characters. I think that was the difference. The first book I feel like was a lot more character driven while the second book was a lot more plot driven, if that makes sense. It was still fantastic, it was still 4.5 and the ending made me sob, obviously. But like, I just felt like I was so much more invested in the first book, where like the entire time I was like, this is incredible, this is amazing, this is five stars. I didn't really get those same feelings during Ruthless Vows, but it's still an incredible book. I love this duology so much. I wanna go back and annotate it. I know the UK covers, because the UK covers are way prettier than the US ones, so I'll be ordering those off Blackwells and they both come in paperback and then annotating them. Lastly, the last book that I don't have a physical copy of that I don't own is A House of Flame and Shadow. I'm not gonna talk much about this one because I have a whole spoiler for reading vlog on my account about this one that I just posted a couple days ago. Um, this is a five star for me. The first book in my like reading in my adulthood journey that I have had to read like the moment it got released. Like in that vlog, I'm sitting on this chair at midnight refreshing my Kindle because I had to start reading it then. I don't think I've had a book lately give me like that many visible reactions in a long time. Like my jaw was dropping at the end of every single chapter. We were getting new information left, right, and center. I just loved it so much. And one thing I want to touch on without spoiling anything still is that if you're seeing people rate like online talk about how they didn't like this book, how this book wasn't they were expecting, they weren't a big fan of it. They went into this book expecting something they weren't going to get. This is an amazing third Crescent City book. And that's what I'm gonna say. And if you are kind of being deterred by some comments you're seeing online, please don't. This was amazing and it was so worth it. And I just, I love these characters. I love this world and I love Sarah J Mass. Now onto the physical ones I have. I just have the stack beside me. I'm just gonna grab them, not in order and just chat about them. So I read the fifth book in the Mortal series, City of Lost Souls. This was a 4.5 for me. This definitely is now my favorite in this series. I think like the Mortal Instruments series. Before I read this one, my favorite was City of Glass, which is another 4.5, but I just loved the character interactions in this one. Like the plot we were following and how the characters interacted and the things they were going through, I thought were really, really fascinating. I did really enjoy this one. Obviously the Infernal Devices still wins for me, but I am really enjoying this series so, so much. I just like, I'm so excited to dive into the rest the Shadowhunters universe. I'm gonna be finishing off the last book um, in February for my 29 books in 29 days. I'm gonna read it then to finish off this series. But I just, I love this world so much. Then I read the first two books in the Golden Trench series by Elsie Silver, Off to the Races and A Photo Finish. Off to the Races was a four star, Photo Finish was a 4.5. And what's actually really funny about this book was this book actually, if you guys remember, I started reading this book in a reading vlog back in November, I swear. I was like, I think it was the one where I had like a random number generator to choose how many pages I read or something like that. Um, and I started this book at the very end of that vlog. And when I tell you I forgot <laughs> that I started it, I forgot that I started it in the sense that I had this book on my TBR and I pulled it and I was like, oh yeah, the second book. And I was like, I did not finish the first one. So I read both this month then. This one follows Billy and Vaughn. I thought it was a great introduction to the Gold Rush Ranch world. I definitely think you can tell that Elsa wrote this series first. I don't mean that in a bad way, but I just think the writing in Chestnut Springs is so, so good. And I kind of think it's interesting to actually go back and read the book she read before because you can see like her growth and progression as a writer, but. And a photo finish is a 4.5. This one follows Violet, who is the sister of the Eaton Brothers from Chestnut Springs, who I love so much. And this one's really good, it was a 4.5. It kind of has like some first proximity, second chance, grumpy sunshine. And I just, I love this one's writing. If Elsa ever writes it, I will read it and eat it up every time. 
I read the search party by Hannah Rochelle. It's actually an arc I've seen from Simon & Schuster and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it a 3.25. This one's always so confusing to explain but pretty much follows four like couples of friends who have been friends since university and they go up to this glamping getaway together, all four couples like with their kids to kind of get away for a weekend because one of them is opening up a glamping business. The timeline of this is they go up on Friday, something terrible happens Saturday night and then Sunday obviously is like the aftermath. So you keep getting um chapters from like friday night and like you cut to sunday morning and you gotta try to figure out what happened like so it leads up to saturday night obviously you find out what's going on but one thing that was kind of confusing with this book but i'm going to tell why it's a good thing is that ev like every single chapter in this book is from a different pov every single chapter so not only switching people but also timing was really confusing so like for example this page here it's scarlet's pov and it's on saturday evening the next chapter Tanya on Sunday evening. It was like, it was a lot to keep up with. So I literally had my bookmark in this front page here. I the author had a character guide. If I did not have this, I would've been so lost. I literally had my bookmark in there permanently. I'd look and be like, okay, Kip. Kip is the 12 year old from the Kinsley family. <laughs> like I had to like constantly remind myself. So yeah, just reading kind of like how confusing it was and me being like a little bit disappointed in how it ended. It was 3.25, but still a really, really good read. Friends, you'd be so proud. I finally picked up The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I know, I know. I've been avoiding this book like the plague. Let me tell you, I listened to this majority on audio because everybody, when I was telling them I was going to read this, was like, oh my God, I listened to the audiobook. It's so good. Now I know why. The person who does the audiobook is so incredibly talented. Not just like in how she tells a story, but like her voice is just as well for different characters. It was so much fun to listen to. This is about Ida LaRue. And at the beginning of the book, she's kind of stuck in a hard place in her life. She wants out. And she ends up being tricked into making a deal where nobody will ever remember her for the rest of her life. And she lives forever really unfortunate. It's pretty much like if you were in a room with Addie and either you left and came back, when you entered the room again, you would not remember who she was. Or like if she left and came back, you'd be like, hi, who are you? And like, nobody can ever remember this woman. Obviously an awful way to live, you know, like she can't have a house because her landlord will forget that they rented to her. She can't stay at a hotel because they will forget she was allowed to stay there. Like it's awful the way she has to live. Then pretty much one day she meets somebody who can remember her and who does remember her. And it's just such a beautiful story. The ending had me crying. And one thing I will say is this was the books where I got to the end and I was like, where is the sequel? <laughs> where is the sequel? I don't understand how you can just end it like that. Kind of rude, but it was a 4.5. I love this so much. The Collector Regrets of Clover was a four star. This book is so special to me. I think because I read it at a really good time in my life when I needed it. So this book is about Clover and she's a death doula. Pretty much she's like whatever somebody needs near the end of life. So if she needs somebody to just be there, if she needs somebody to help plan, so you know, somebody to like talk through some things with and just kind of come to acceptance, she is that person. So while the story is about death at its core, it's also just about kind of how Clover realizes that, you know, she always hears these stories from people who are at the end of their life saying they wish they did these things. They wish they lived bigger, did more, made more relationship. And she kind of sits there and she's like, so I hear these things every day. I give them advice on how to deal with that as they're coming together their life but I don't do it myself. I read this book the first week of January and I lost my great grandma at the very very end of December and so this was like hard to read right after that but like I think it was also like so therapeutic and healing in a way and this book just like meant so much to me at the time that I read it so I loved it a lot. Then I'm so proud I finished off a series where I'm now completely up to date with the Entangle the Fae series. If you guys know Entangle the Fae is kind of like a series of interconnected standalones where they're all like fairy tale princess retellings but with fae elements. I would say they're a great like break in point to fantasy because you know the story's already you kind of get the gist of what's going to happen but they're told in like fun ways with fae characters who you love. This was a dream so wicked this one was a sleeping beauty retelling and one thing I love is that the Entangled Face series, I feel like, is consistently like a 3.5, 3.75 star for me, and this one was a four star. So best in the series. Um, I do love some beauty though. That could have been it, but I just feel like the story, like, I've made the fifth of me, like, she was just really coming into like her writing and like how she wanted to write the series. But I feel like the action this one picked up right from the very beginning. I didn't really slow down the entire way. It was 500 pages. I'm pretty sure, like, close to 500. Yeah, it's like 495 pages, and I was hooked the entire time. I really enjoyed it. I think it's my favorite one yet. And these ones aren't all connected, but I read a lot of historical fiction this month that I'm really excited to talk about, so let's jump in. So my main thing with historical fiction lately is I've been loving reading books that teach me something that I didn't know before. This doesn't really make much sense. Like all these books have taken like are either taken place or taken time in areas of history I haven't really learned much about or know much about. It's so why I just loved learning more about them. 
through these different lenses. So the first one is The Roads We Take. It was by Christy K. Lee. She's a debut author who actually sent me this book. And this was actually during the World War II time period, but it's in Canada and it's about women in the medical field during that time. Being a Canadian, I loved reading this one and learning all about it. It focuses on how our main character not only had a tough time in life just because she was a woman at the time trying to pursue a medical profession, but also because she was a woman in general. And I thought that time, you know, a lot of how much a woman was worth and what she could do was based on what her husband decided. It's a beautiful story and it kind of gave me Kristen Hanna vibes in the sense that we were with this character for such a large portion of her life and we followed along and grew with her and felt so much for her. And I just, I really, really enjoyed this one. It was a 3.75 and I highly recommend it. The second book was The Stormy Made by Vanessa Chen. And this one was also set during World War II. And one of the reasons why I love reading these two books is that when I think World War II, I think of Europe. Because whenever I learned about it in school, all I learned about was Europe. This book actually takes place during World War II in Malaysia when the Japanese invaded. I had never heard about this <laughs> at all in my entire life. And so I love reading about this and learning more about it. This story is very graphic, I will say. Make sure you check your trigger warnings. It is a very hard read a lot of the time but an important one. So it was also 3.75, I believe. Um, she felt a little bit flat for me at the ending. I get what they were setting up to do and I understand why it happened, but like the ending, like I was kind of like, oh, oh, that's awful. So yeah. And then lastly was River Sing Me Home. This one was a four star and I absolutely love this one. This one's set like in, I think it's 1834 in Barbados when they just announced that slavery was ended. And pretty much this one, our main character is a mother and it's now her story of her traveling around the Caribbean trying to find her children who she thinks might still be alive. Whether they were traded, sold, lost, she goes out hunting for them with like very, very little information about where they possibly could be. And it was just such a beautiful story and I loved it. I continue on with the Eden series where the second book, Juniper Hill. This one was a 3.5 for me. I find this series just kind of like nice palette cleansers between all the big fantasies that I read, to be honest. And I always tell people the Eden series for me does what I wish the Knockabout trilogy did where it's a romance, a little bit of fun mystery in it, but it's not 500 plus pages. They're an adequate size, they're like 300 pages. Thank you for that. And for instance, when we follow Memphis, she's a single mom who comes into town and she starts working at one of the Eden's businesses at the Eloise Hotel. She meets Knox and things kind of go from there. Actually, for the whole series, I'll be reading books three through six now next month for reading 29 books in 29 days in February. I keep going with the Shades of Magic trilogy. I read the first book, I literally think back in like March or April of 2023. Um, I've just like been avoiding it. Oh, I haven't really been avoiding them. Just, like I find that other books keep taking like precedence over these ones. I don't pick them up. But so I read a Gathering of Shadows. This was a 4.25. Same kind of thing as a Christopher True Love. I think my main problem with this one was I loved our two main characters and how like their banter and stuff was when they were together. And they were separated for a large portion of this book. But then I loved like the games aspect to it. I always love a good games, competition, and fantasy. It's really like my cup of tea. And so I did really enjoy that part of it. And then I am so excited because I got up to date on the Grishaverse. So I read The King of Scars Duology, King of Scars, and Rule of Wolves. Now, King of Scars is a 4.25. I already was so excited going into this book because I didn't read the back. <laughs> so I didn't know who was in this book. And I started reading it. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Because I got characters who I didn't think I was going to get to see in this book that I was really excited about. Um, but I feel like this one was like a little bit more plot heavy, obviously, because it had to set up as you have to do in fantasy. I feel like the whole first half like kind of dragged a little bit. And I was kind of just like, okay, like, where are we going with this? But then honestly, the last like 50 pages made up for it. The last 50 pages were so good. It's like crazy things happening. And I'm not going to speak too much on the actual plot of this one because I feel like it's hard to talk with this stuff without mentioning other things that happened in the Grish first already because this is clearly like it's the first book in this duology, but it's the sixth book in the Grishaverse. The events that happen in this book take place after the events of Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows. So you can want to read those two before you get into this one. And then Rule of Wolves. This was a five star. This was a five star. This is my Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> this is my Spider-Man No Way Home. I love how she ended this book off in a way that was like very satisfying and was a good ending for the duology, but also like left the door open for potential books in the Grish Force if she would love to continue with this because I would love if she did. I'm pretty sure she signed like a, a million dollar book deal for I think it was seven books. And so I'm really hoping more of those include the Grish Force because please, I'm not ready to leave these people yet. I love them so much, so yeah. Hey okay, guys, these are the 17 books I've read in the month of January. I had a really great start to my year. And like I said, I'm so excited to dive in to do 29 books in 29 days in February. So to think I'm gonna have like, this stack here is 13 books because I don't have four of them. So my stack for next month's gonna be double this. <laughs> 29 books. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this, please forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm also on TikTok, Angel's Book Corner, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.